You may have heard a song or two from Oliver Tree. With his catchy lyrics and unique melodies, his music has been featured on the radio, in several festivals, and of course, TikTok. However, if you took the time to do a Google search on him, you'll quickly realize that Oliver Tree is anything but mainstream. To give you a brief summary of what you'd find, Oliver Tree is an ex-professional unicyclist for the Pickle Family Circus, who became a proficient belly dancer at the age of seven years old. Later on, he found himself after taking way too much acid during a family trip to the Burning Man Festival. Today, he makes music with aliens, films videos with the infamous Island Boys, and worships the Chili Bowl Mullet Man. As you probably assumed after hearing all of that, Oliver Tree is actually just playing an elaborate character. Every interview he does is really just a convoluted game of two truths to a lie. And today, we'll be piecing together those truths to answer the million dollar question, who is Oliver Tree? Oliver Tree Nickel was born in 1993 in Santa Cruz, California. As I briefly mentioned earlier, he has a million different childhood stories and the vast majority of them seem to be lies. He claims to be a professional belly dancer who was helping pay his parents' bills by the age of nine. Later on, his stories changed. Allegedly, his parents were trapeze artists, leading him to become a unicyclist for the Pickle Family Circus. However, the Pickle Family Circus went bankrupt in 1992, a year before Oliver was born. This discredits the circus story, and the belly dancing story just seems a little too ridiculous to be true in my opinion. The only other story left, and the most realistic one, is that Oliver Tree spent his childhood making music. His parents met in a flute class, and they both shared an affinity for music. They put Oliver into piano lessons when he was three, and he began writing songs the next year. He claims he had a full album written by the time he turned six. In middle school, he joined the ska band named Irony as their singer and guitarist. A year or two later, Oliver created his first known stage name, Crife. Not much is known about this period. As far as I can tell, Oliver never officially released any music under the name Crife. There are a few videos buried on YouTube, that's about it. It was at this point he created the rap group Mindfuck with a few of his friends. But he really didn't gain any traction until he switched to the moniker of Tree. Oliver's high school years are where his story starts to get interesting. He got more into DJing and even opened up for Skrillex. He did so well that a local production company asked him to create music for them. Unfortunately, they later decided Tree's music was too experimental and backed out of the deal. This is about the time when Oliver discovered his other passion, scootering. Scooter, not a bitch! He was highly talented and found himself doing major competitions at the age of 18 years old. He signed to the Santa Cruz Junior Syndicate team and his future was looking bright until tragedy struck. While competing, his scooter hit a pebble which sent him flying. This resulted in two broken wrists and a fractured CMC joint. This led Oliver to reevaluating his future. He ultimately decided to return back to music due to longevity concerns. He continued releasing music under the name Tree on SoundCloud while attending San Francisco State University for business. Eventually, he was spotted by the London-based label Apollo Records, who convinced him to quit school and focus on music. He released his first EP, Demons, in 2013, and his first LP, Splitting Branches, a year later. Although Tree was having success, he decided to go back to school before furthering his music career. While in school, he planned the takeover of Oliver Tree, and the first step of this elaborate plan was a new persona he deemed Turbo. What's up, my name's Turbo. I'm 32 years old, I love to dance, and I sell ecstasy to children at raves. Hit me up. This video was posted to Vine in 2015, right when Vine's popularity was at its all-time high. At this point, he was living with famous influencers Tanner Petula and Nick Coletti. Coletti was a comedian and actor with high potential, and Petula was an up-and-coming DJ. They helped Oliver continue uploading skits as Turbo, and he was gaining popularity with every video. Eventually, he even collaborated with Barstool Sports and Fuck Jerry, two very successful comedy companies. With his famous bowl cut, a ski jacket he stole from his mom, some Jenko jeans, and a pair of red sunglasses, he created the iconic look. Whether on purpose or not, this established his brand, which became essential for step two. Oliver returned to music, finally rebranding himself from Tree to the name we all know today, Oliver Tree. In 2016, he released a single, When I'm Down. Oliver's life changed almost immediately. His song went viral, which caught the attention of Atlantic Records. He signed a deal with them and then graduated CalArts a month later. He released his debut EP, Alien Boy, in 2018, along with a self-directed music video. 
This was the first time that we saw Oliver directly use alternate mediums to support his music career. He kept the look of turbo and the theme of scootering while singing songs about heartbreak and loneliness. He found success and his unique blend of comedy and high quality music only escalated from there. However, in 2020, Oliver announced that his next album was gonna be his last. He would retire from music and start his own film production company. On the H3 podcast and in an interview with Anthony Fantano, he cited his controlling and unfair label as his reasoning. The radio vampires come out and leech on you. They want one more thing. The label's never satisfied. They want one more. He claims that they didn't allow him to release his album until he reached a million followers. And once he did, they upped the requirements to two million. They also took songs from his album and released them as singles, which Oliver compared to ripping chapters out of a book and selling them separately. It was at this point that Oliver was kidnapped. The story was played out through his Instagram account where you can see Oliver tied up to a chair as a masked man yells at him. Oliver claimed that the man was forcing him to reach 1 million followers before releasing his album. This was obviously all staged. The kidnapping seems to be a metaphor for the control his record label had over him and was likely just a stunt to reach his million follower milestone quicker. Finally, in 2020, he released his debut album, Ugly is Beautiful. But despite his claims, this wasn't Oliver's last album. After the release of Ugly is Beautiful, Oliver decided to spend about six months at his grandparents' ranch. This inspired him to create a new album, this time in the country genre. He says it wasn't planned at all. He was genuinely going to retire. But after working on it a little bit, he realized he needed to share it with others. He named it Cowboy Tears. He ditched a turbo style, instead sporting a tasseled ski jacket, a goatee, and the haircut he dubbed the bullet cut. It's a unique combination of the famous bull cut and a mullet. He credits the Chili Bowl mullet man as the creator. Oliver basically worships this guy, and I have to admit, he's definitely interesting. Even though the original outfit was gone, the character lived on, arguably becoming even more of a troll. However, this would be his last album, for real this time. Oliver has other plans. He states he's a storyteller and music just isn't enough to tell the stories that he wants to tell, so he's gonna switch to video production. He also wants to get into professional wrestling, revive his belly dancing career, and become a model. Considering he's already retired once before and came back, and the fact that he has a history of making up weird stories about himself, I can't confirm the validity of a single one of these statements. However, at the time of this video, he's still retired and his last album came out a few months ago. Oliver Tree is completely unpredictable, and this becomes even more apparent when you look at another one of his characters, Little Ricky ZR3. Oliver was leaving breadcrumbs on Little Ricky for weeks up to the release of his album Ugly is Beautiful. In every interview he did, he would somehow mention Little Ricky in one way or another. I don't give a fuck about any of the musicians that are happening right now except for one person. And there's this new artist I've been listening to and a guy who, quite frankly, is the only feature on my album and probably, in my opinion, going to be one of the biggest artists on the planet in the next couple of years, Little Ricky ZR3. Our first real look at Little Ricky was in Oliver's song 1993. Little Ricky had a short feature and has also appeared in a few of the song's live performances. However, if you listen closely, you'd realize that Little Ricky ZR3 sounds a lot like Oliver, just pitched down a bit. This, combined with Oliver's retirement announcement, led many viewers to believe that Oliver was going to quit creating music as Oliver Tree and instead become Little Ricky ZR3 to escape the control of Atlantic Records. Others believe that Oliver's close friend Casey Matson was going to become Little Ricky due to some odd Instagram posts, and Oliver was simply trying to promote his friend's music career. It isn't uncommon for Oliver to reference fake names or characters in his interviews, such as his lawyer Jeremiah Jeffrey and his sponsor Meditech Industries. And I partnered with this company, Meditech Laboratories. I can't really get into the details. My lawyer Jeremiah Jeffrey has advised that I don't really talk about this. Do you know Jeremiah Jeffrey? You... So if you look him up, Jeremiah Jeffrey has a website and he's literally the number one lawyer in America. If you Google each subject, you'll find some nondescript websites with very little information. Some dedicated fans have spent a lot of time searching through his social media accounts, websites, music videos, and anything else tied to Oliver to unearth different clues. The mystery around Little Ricky ZR3 and Meditech Industries peaked in 2020 and has since died down. The solution, if there was ever one, wasn't ever found. This isn't the first time a stunt like this has been pulled. 
Strategies like this are often referred to as alternate reality games. ARGs are a very unique form of viral marketing, and when done right, they have massive payoffs. However, they aren't easy to pull off. There's been a ton of ARGs in the last decade or so, but the best example is when a website for an island named Rhoda popped up in 2019. The island didn't actually exist, and all of the videos and information on the website just seemed off. Eventually, players realized that this was all a promotion for Harry Styles' new single. Although Oliver's ARG ultimately seems unfinished, the idea was still genius. There's a lot more to Oliver Tree than meets the eye, and nearly everything he says or does seems to have an ulterior motive. Most people will agree that Oliver's music is underrated, but I would argue that his understanding of marketing and promotion is even more underrated. The majority of people view Oliver Tree as nothing more than a troll, but everything he's done has been planned and well researched. While Oliver was at CalArts for Music Tech, he spent his free time researching the science behind memes and internet virality. Yeah, it's something that I take very serious. I studied memes thoroughly. I studied the origins of it on the internet. While many people would laugh at this or question what science could possibly be behind memes, Oliver was trying to figure out a way to use them to boost his music career. He claims he wrote his senior thesis on how to turn yourself into a meme. I've been developing it into a memoir, and this is how to turn yourself into a meme, the road to using your image as a vehicle. It lays the blueprint for what I've been doing. And Oliver isn't the only example of using memes to create a music career. Little Nas X did something similar with his song Old Town Road, which took him from a nobody to a household name in just months. Also, what's interesting is that Little Nas X just hit him with a cease and desist letter, claiming that Oliver's song Cowboys Don't Cry sounds a lot like Old Town Road. But who knows if that's even real or not. Either way, Jeremiah Jeffries is on the case, so Little Nas X better watch out. The concept of using comedy as a medium to gain a platform isn't anything new, but the way Oliver has done it is truly unique. The line between the trolling character and the music is blurred, and Oliver never truly breaks character. His integration is seamless and his dedication is beyond impressive. He writes extremely well-produced songs on heartbreak, loneliness, and addiction, and then will tell interviewers that his greatest inspirations are the Chili Bowl mullet man and scootering. His satirical character is reminiscent of Andy Kaufman or Nathan Fielder, where you can't quite tell if they're joking or not. Nearly every single interview he does ends in an argument, such as his interview with Logan Paul. Fuck! Oh, that's too what I'm fucking do, done! Baby, that's too what are you uh, gonna do? That's too what I Ethan Klein. Get off my shot. Sit down! Sit the fuck down! Get off my And even Anthony Fantano. Shut the fuck, fuck up. You. Shut you don't want to say shit. You want to talk about Shut repetition? Your shitty ass YouTube up. channel is one shitty review after another. If you hadn't already heard of Oliver Tree, you would likely believe that this is his actual personality. However, even with the comedic character he plays, he still manages to bring light to serious topics, which is both admirable and impressive. As I already mentioned, Oliver's music is usually based around serious topics. He stated that his intent behind Ugly is Beautiful was to get people to love themselves. His intent behind Cowboy Tears was to show that men have feelings too. As cliche as these messages are, they're still important, and it's cool to see Oliver use his platform to try to help people out. He's a self-declared starving artist who is not only a talented musician and entertainer, but a smart, positive individual. I can't wait to see where he goes from here. Whether it's music, video production, or even professional wrestling, I have no doubts that this is just the beginning of Oliver Tree's story.